Marlon Eugene Starling Jr. <clears throat> and uh, do I have permission to record this interview? Yes, you do. All right. Um, so tell me where you're from. Uh, I'm from Hartford, Connecticut. Okay. And uh, how old are you? Uh, 35. And you've lived here your whole life? Um, yeah, you can say that. I moved around a lot, but the majority of my whole life been here in Connecticut. All right. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, uh, tell me about tell me about your school experience, uh, your parents. All right, um, <clears throat> I'll start with my parents first. Uh, my mom is uh, Gay O'Neill. Uh, she's from um, Harlem, New York, and then uh, she moved to Newport News, Virginia. Um, from there, then she moved up to Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, met my father at uh, Hartford Public uh, High School, and uh, my father' uh, name is uh, Marlon. Um, Starlin Senior. Uh, he's from Hartford, Connecticut, Doggy Square uh, apartment complexes. Um, from there, uh, the this, this school that I went to was uh, Sands, uh, okay. Sands Public School. And then from Sands Public School, once my father became a uh, professional boxer, we moved out to South Windsor. Okay. And I went to school through uh, South Windsor school systems all the way up to South Windsor High. Okay. Um, and you said your father was a professional boxer. Um, what was that like to, to be the son of a professional boxer? Um, it had some good and, you know, bad times. The good times was good. Uh, traveling, uh, meeting different people, uh, you know, just getting their whole uh, different experiences on the road. Just seeing what my father do, like the struggle that he had to get to to become the two-time welterweight champion of the world, yeah. that was good. Um, bad times, I can say, was uh, uh, when my father, um, his uh, partying lifestyle, uh, not really spending a, uh, I guess you could say, uh, you know, quality time when, you know, he was back home. Uh, but, when we were on the road training, he was a you know a totally different person. Um, but yeah, the, I, you could say the bad times uh, was just him, you know, being he was young at the time, you know, in his 20s. So you know, if you had a, a majority of sports people that you know has a decent amount of money in their 20s, they, you know, they're always on the go. Right. Um, but uh, I guess the way he made up for those things, you know, buying me things, you know, but I didn't. I didn't really want that, you know, right. I just wanted his time, so. So, it's interesting, the, the name of this site is Son of a Superhero. Without going into it, it's not in my interview, but uh, that that's definitely a, a good and a bad situation. Yeah. Uh, if you're pulling the good and the bad from those who are mentoring you and raising you. Mm -hmm. What did you pull that was, uh, you know, you said you got something from the strength, the struggle that you went through. What do you, what, like, what directly, how does that directly affect your life? How did it uh, affect me? Um, just seeing how hard he had to work to, you know, get to where he is, you know, what he went through, you know, to, to get those titles, you know. Uh, how do you use that? How do I use it? Uh, I just put myself in the same situation as far as, uh, you know, the business that I do. Um, you know, you have your ups and downs, you know. Um, it's, uh, it's pain and then it's, it's glory at the end of the day, you know? So, uh, you know, that, that's, I used it, you know, as far as his experiences, uh, dealing with people, you know, um, that's as of different races, uh, cause you know, he had a lot of people that he dealt with that he thought that was his friends. And um, they came to find out in the long run, it wasn't, they was just there for the money. So. I think like, you know, the people I'm around with now, I try to make sure I'm around positive people. I used to be around a lot of negative people, so I cut that out just from his experiences and the, the situations he went through and try to, you know, better myself, you know, to make sure I don't end up the same way he ended up. Um, sometimes when you have uh, a one parent with a particular personality that stands out, um, to talk about the things that you pull from the other parent. So tell me what, what you got from your mother. Um, now this is interesting because my mom actually left me at the age of two. Okay. So uh, my grandmother was the one that really quote unquote raised me. Right. You know, um, 
since my father wasn't around. You know, and the only time that I did really to get, uh, really got to spend time with him was when he was at training camps. But besides that, um, I was underneath my grandmother all the time. And, uh, I got those motherly, you know, experiences from her. You know, um, cooking, uh, sewing, you know, uh, planning, she, and, you know. Yeah, what she used to always, what did she, pick a phrase that she used to always say to you. What, what uh, can you remember? Um... Don't uh, do not do that. That was one of her phrases. Um, don't do that meaning, uh, you know, you know what you're doing wrong, you know, try to stay stay on that path the way I, you know, I'm, I'm teaching you, you know, don't follow in the same footsteps as other people as far as my uh, friends that I grew up with in Bellevue School. As far as school, were you a good student? Um, I was average, you know. I was an average student. I would say once I got to high school, you know, uh, freshman year, played a lot of football, sports, lacrosse. Uh, I was I was pretty good in school. Then uh, I had a bad knee injury, and then after that, like, uh, you know, sports was like whatever. Um, I was just into partying, skipping, you know, skipping school. But I still maintained probably like C plus, B minus average, you know. Um, but a lot of partying, you know, um, smoking, drinking, trying, you know, chasing girls. But I still, you know, maintained in the books. I didn't just completely go out the window and just drop out and, you know, not go to school all the time. But So did that change at some point? Um, actually, it did. Uh, 96 was my last year. Um, around uh, uh, January. My grandmother passed, and that was my heart. You know, that was like my, basically my mother. Yeah. And uh, when she passed, um, I just I, I was lost. You know, uh, I actually didn't uh, I didn't go to school the last uh, was it half half that year, but the principal, you know, he, we were so tight. I was cool with all the teachers. They actually passed me. To you know, graduate. They knew. I mean, they knew what you know what was going on. They came to my house. I had friends, family, uh, a lot of uh, people that I didn't even know came to my house because they didn't see me at school. So I didn't know I, you know, I influenced. I was such a you know one of those type of people that you know everybody liked, and I didn't know that. So it kind of made me look at things different from there after that, you know. And now, what are you doing? Um, I actually own a co-CEO of a clothing line, uh, Urban Yuppie, t-shirt, hat. Um, started off as a blog in 09, and, um, you know, from there I was like, man, you know, I always had dreams, of, I always like style, fashion, yeah. so, you know, I told people, you know, everybody got to know the name, and it was like, man, that's a tough name, I like the name, and what does it mean? And, how I got the name was from my father in the 80s. He used to have this uh, a picture. It was a BMW American Express card, a gold American Express, because in the 80s they didn't have black cards. So a gold card was a big thing before platinum and all that. And a bottle of um, Dom Perignon in the picture. And under it said yuppie. So I used to ask my father, you know, what's that word? You know, what it mean? And he told me uh, young... Um, uh, yeah, young yeah, urban professional. Yeah. And um, I was like, what is, you know, what does that mean? You know, he was like, such as myself, I'm young and I'm a professional at what I do. You know, I'm a, I'm a successful professional. And I used to say, you know, that's what I want to be. Yeah. So, uh, like, I think uh, 05, he gave me that picture. And I used to look at it and, you know, this is what I want, you know, in life. That, you know, I want these things. And, um, in 09, I actually, you know, started a blog looking for a lot of young urban professionals, you know, to, you know, basically come together and, you know, share ideas, experiences, and how they got to that level. And then it started, you know, things started turning. I turned into a clothing line, and, you know, over the years past, I'm like, you know, I like material things, but it, it didn't, you know, I didn't need it, you know, at the, you know, like, I wanted more out of life uh, to be successful. I wanted. I was thinking of instead of getting a nice Bentley or you know Rolls Royce or something like that. You know, I want some land. I want to travel. I want to see the world. 
I want to learn about different cultures, you know, different uh, races, and, um, you know, just live life, you know, and um, that's what I got out of it, and I was like, you know, I'm going to make it into a clothing line, and I partnered up with my boy, uh, Phil Weinholz, that I met through my cousin, uh, Jarrell Starling, uh, they were doing some work with each other, and um, we made it into the brand it is now. And how's business? How are things going? Um, actually, just this year, things are picking up. Okay. Um, once uh, we came out with the hats, t-shirts, things like that, we always had the website up, and we were getting traffic, but uh, nobody wasn't, you know, buying anything. And uh, now, we changed up some of the I- uh, ideas and the designs. And a lot of people are coming out supporting. Friends, people I don't even know from like California, um, Midwest, East Coast, and people out of the country, Germany, um, Spain, um, uh, where else? Uh, Japan. So I'm like, you know, wow, this is taking off. You know what I mean? But at the same time, it's, I'm, you know, I'm not. My little brother asked me. He was like, what do you, what do you, you know, what do you think? Like, you, you, the line is taking off, like. You're not happy about it? I'm like, you know, I'm okay. I'm settled, but I'm not where I want to be, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I want to be much further, you know? Still hungry. Yeah, still hungry. So, uh, where do you see? I mean, you know, you're saying you're still hungry. You're not where you want to be. You're satisfied with the progress so far. Where do you want to be? What's your vision? My uh, overall vision? Yeah. Help people. Okay. Um, gain my uh, finance from this. And uh, take the uh, take my money, you know, fortune, wealth, whatever. And uh, I want to go to like Africa, places like that. Build uh, sanitation systems. Uh, help, you know, education wise. Diff- t- teach about different culture. Teaching about eating right. Um, that's my real big thing too. It's about growing your own uh, vegetables. You know what I mean? Uh, that that's that's what I want to do. Okay, looking to do that also in urban environments as well. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, urban city, you know, just teaching them how to grow vegetables. You know, not to rely on, you know, where you got to get your food from. Because now, with all these things that's in the food, um, my beliefs is what a lot of these, dis- you know, what's uh, these diseases that are happening in the world is coming from the food, even from. Uh, you could you could check. I mean, you could you could tell because of my like when I was coming up in high school, some of these females, you know, yeah. the bodies is crazy. You know, like now, like a girl that's 12, 13 look like she's about twenty one years old. And I'm you know I'm sitting there and I'm talking, you know, with different females and getting their views on it, and they're like, it's gotta be in the water. You know that old saying, it's in the water, it's in yeah, the food. Yeah. And really, I believe that it's in the food and it's in the water. You are what you eat. Right? Yeah, exactly. Um, let's back up a little bit because I wanted to, I think it's important um, when people are hearing the story and how you got from one place to the other. Mm-hmm. Uh, what you said there was a, there was a change. You, you started to get a lot of traffic, um, and then you know some international traffic. Whatever. What are the specific res- the specific tools that you use to get the word out to people? How are people encountering? Urban Facebook, Twitter, um, you know, multimedia, things yeah. like that. Um, this photo shoot we just recently had with um, uh, my boy uh, Phil Weinholz, uh, Travis, which is, he runs a, a LJE modeling uh, agency. Right. Uh, my cousin Marty Austin and uh, my boy uh, David Rojas um, helped me out a lot with that. Okay. So, uh, that's what, that's now it's like you know we got a lot of people hitting us up yeah. um, actually uh, people from um, that are uh, actually that's cool with uh, Wale uh, camp and, uh, MMG um, dudes uh, they're looking into uh, you know they want a couple of clothes a couple of boutiques around here right. uh, wanting clothes um, friend, I got some friends that own boutiques in Atlanta Miami uh, they want some clothes but uh I want to keep it exclusive, you know. Right. I don't want it to get, uh, you know, something like how, like I say, Rockaway or something like that. No, you know, nothing against Rockaway, but um, I just don't want it mainstream right now, you know. So, what's 
so it's a it's an interesting message to urban yuppie. You want to be that uh, the young urban professional with the urban feel, right? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the in our culture, especially for young black men, uh, you know, we we say we want to be successful, mm -hmm. um, but that usually comes in a particular package. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, do you want to? What's is there a mold you want to stay in? Uh, is there something that you're trying to break out of? Um, you're saying like how I guess in our culture when somebody say they're successful, they got the big house and the jewels right. and, all that, and, and, and the, yeah, and all that. Yeah, and all that. Nah. Uh, um, those things are nice, you know. Yeah. Who don't want those things, right. you know? But that's not that don't make me, you know. Um, I'm just, you know, lately I've just been thinking out the box, you know. Um, I want different things. I, I want the house where you have 60 something or 100 acres of land that's out of the country doing my own vineyard or something like that. You know, something completely different. You know, I don't, not a bunch of, you know, girls around and living the playboy lifestyle, you know. You know, I, I feel as, you know, you get older, you, you know, you're supposed to be more mature, you know. Have you, go ahead. Uh, just, you know, become a role model. Like, you know, you got a lot of sports entertainers that say, I'm not a role model, I'm not a role model. To me, that's bullshit. Yeah. You know, because you're in the public eye. Little kids see that. You know, they're wearing your jerseys, listening to your music, wearing your sneakers. You are a role model, you know? So, I think, you know, you got to say, you know, I got kids his, you know, his age or a daughter his age, you know, son his age, and I want to make a difference for them. That's that's what I want to do. I want to show them the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, instead of just showing them the good life all the time. You know, I want to show them where I came from, where, uh, where I'm at, and where I'm going. So. Have you gotten a chance to travel? I know you said that's something you want to do. No, actually, I haven't. The only place I, I have been was uh, in Mexico. Um, I forgot what part of Mexico, but it was a part that was real poor in the mountains uh, with my father. And uh, the funny thing is, we took a private jet uh, from Brownsville, Texas, and this was in the early '80s. And you know, a lot of these rappers talking about flying G4s and all that stuff. I didn't know that, you know, that was what that was back then, but it was regular to me, you know. And um, my father actually gave me, and I was young at the time, he gave me a thousand dollars. You know, you can do what you want to do with it. What I did with my money was. There was so many little kids, like, no one had shoes on, there was no running water, there was no lights, people lived in shacks, you know? I was, I changed all my money into, uh, was it, pesos, and I was giving away money. Wow. That's what I did. That's deep. How old were you? Dang, I think I probably was, I want to say 10 or 11? Okay. Yeah, about 10 or 11. And it was, uh, it was actually up in uh, Mexico where they have a lot of coal mines. So, I think, yeah, I think it was cold mines. Uh, let's switch it up a little bit. What, what's your favorite food? Um, it, you, my favorite food used to be uh, soul food. Um, what in particular? Fried chicken, collard greens, stuff like that. But then, um, you know, I, I got out of that. I stopped. You know, I, I still eat fried food once in a while, but, you know, I, back then I was eating it. That was just regular meal, you know. And what was the best place to get that? The best place I've been to, to get soul food is two. Uh, one was in L.A. Uh, called Aunt Kizzy's. Mm -hmm. And another one was in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. I think it was called uh, Yasmin's or something like that. It's a Muslim spot. Um, but they actually, I, you know, I still eat that, you yeah. know, their food. Uh, you know, they don't have no pork uh, byproducts in it, you know, stuff like that, so it's good for you. And you say you switched, so now, what would be your favorite? Um, anything that's coming out of the ground, yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, I eat more, a lot more raw vegetables now. I still eat chicken, um, lamb, uh, I eat beef rarely, um, no pork. That's just, you know, what I, you know, I, I just don't, I don't tell, every, you know, somebody else, you need to eat that way, but, you know, to each his own. But I do want to share, you know, help, you know. 
What's uh what's your favorite sound? Favorite sound? Mm -hmm. Um sound, sound. As far as music? Any sound in the world. Wow, that's deep. Nobody never asked me no question like no. that. Uh the ocean? If you had your degree. And all your travels, I guess you, you'll visit the uh, ocean as much as possible. Um, I don't really get the chance to. I said, but you will. Yeah. You oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Uh, so, just in closing, for now, mm -hmm. because uh, I think what, what we want to do at um, Son of a Superhero and Feed the People is follow up. Because the story doesn't stop just because the tape stops. Right? Mm -hmm. But just to, just to, to end it out right now... Um, Think about how you feed the people, and you've described several different ways how you want to and how you are. You're beginning to now. You give me uh, three to five words. Just give me a few words that you think exemplify how you feed the people, or how you plan to feed the people. Wow. Health, motivation, um, responsibility. Love and peace. Yeah. Thank you for feeding the people.